Hi everyone, Jim here. I'm about to go on a kayak camping trip for Labor Day weekend. Let me tell you about what gear I'm taking. Now before I get into the video, why don't you hit subscribe and join my channel. Uh, I put together videos of how-tos, outdoor adventures, recipes, you name it. Um, so I think I have some good content here and love to have you join. So this weekend I'm going to go to the Pine River in Michigan and do a three-day kayaking trip down the river. So we'll have three nights camping and three days kayaking. And it should be a lot of fun. Now one of the requests that I've gotten from several friends of mine in my hiking groups is to put together a gear list for what types of things you would need to do kayak camping. Um, a lot of them would like to join us but they don't have the stuff and they asked me to put this video together so that they would know what to get for next year when we start doing these again. So kayak camping is just like backpacking or bike packing. It's, you know, you have lightweight gear that you're going to carry with you. Um, one of the advantages with a kayak is that you don't have to carry it on your back. So you can carry a little bit more weight um, and distribute it through the kayak. Other than that, most things are the same. There's only one major difference. So when you're camping in a kayak, you're going to use a dry bag instead of a backpack. But other than that, most of the stuff is the same. You'll have a few additional items that you'll have for kayaking, but as far as sleeping in a tent and camping, most of the gear should be just about the same as what you would have if you were going backpacking. So to start out, let me show you what I'm going to have for a sleep system. Now for my sleep system, I'm going to be using a Z-Pax Duplex XL tent, a Big Agnes Q-Core Deluxe pad, an Enlightened Equipment Revelation quilt, and a Nemo pillow. Now, if you'll notice, I label each one of the bags, even though it's pretty obvious sometimes, um, once these things are out of the stuff sack, lots of times it's hard to remember which, what things go with what. So I find it easier to just put, you know, use a permanent marker and label everything. Uh, I haven't labeled this yet because I haven't tested it and I may still need to return it. So the Z-Pax tent is a really nice tent, um, but it's really expensive. Uh, the main reason that I've got it is because I'm a really big guy and this is designed for people up to seven feet tall. Um, and that's the same thing with most of my equipment here. Uh, the pillow is the only thing that is not size dependent. Uh, the Evolution quilt is a custom one that's a little longer, um, but you can get these standard. If you're an average size person and you're just getting started, you don't need to invest this much money into equipment. Um, this tent here is awesome because it's made out of a Dyneema material, which is really tough and completely waterproof, but again, it's really expensive. So this is about a $700 tent. But for a little over $100, you can get this tent from FB Sports on Amazon, and it also works with trekking poles, and it works really well. Um, if you're going kayak camping, though, you're going to need poles besides the trekking poles, and I would recommend the carbon fiber poles from ZPAX. Um, they're not too, too expensive, and they work really well for kayak camping. I'll be putting links to everything in the description below so you can find some of these things. Again, the Big Agnes sleeping pad is a pretty expensive pad. It's a 30 by 78, so it's really designed for um, someone of my size. If you just need a standard size pad, Climate makes one for well under $100. Um, I've had friends of mine that use those on the trail and that they really love them. Uh, Climate also makes one in an extra, extra large size that I didn't know about until after I bought this. So I may buy that down the road just to do a review on it because it was about a hundred bucks, um, which is, this was over 200. So that would be, you know, less than half the price. The Evolution quilt is a great quilt. Um, Enlightened Equipment makes really high quality stuff. Um, it is a little delicate because of how lightweight it is. The nylon is kind of thin, um, but other than that, it's, it's super warm. But again, this is high-end equipment. You can go on Amazon and get a Nature Light Ultra Light Down sleeping bag for under $100. Um, and that's a nice square sleeping bag. If you like a mummy sleeping bag, you can get an Aegis Max from Amazon, just like this one, for all, also for under 100 bucks. So um, you don't need to spend a ton of money. Um, pillows, personal preference. Uh, for me, I need a big pillow. Uh, you know, my shoulders are large and I sleep on my side. So this pillow weighs a pound, which is a lot for carrying in a backpack. It's not too bad for kayak camping, but you really need to try out what pillows you like. Some people can just take a stuff sack and fill it with clothes and sleep on it. Other people can do, you know, a really thin air pillow, or you can get a foam filled pillow that compresses really small. Um, there's a whole bunch of options and you know, I've tried a whole bunch of them. This is the one that I finally settled on that I figure works pretty well. 
So this is the complete sleep system I have, and this will then go into the dry bag. Now, oftentimes I will take and put this into another uh, compression sack so I can compress it down even more so there'll be more room. Um, that's easy to do with a down quilt. If you're struggling for room, you know, you can also get compression sacks to shrink other pieces down further. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna to need to look at is the cook system. Most of the cooking that you do in the backcountry is just boiling water and rehydrating foods. Like here's an example of what I usually take along with me. I like the Mountain House uh, spaghetti and lasagna, and they're real easy. You just add a couple of cups of boiling water to this, let it sit for about 10 minutes, and, and you've got a nice dinner. Um, so to do that, you, you have a, a number of options. Now, my kit, looks like this. So I have a Tokes titanium pot that's about 700 milliliters. And inside here, I've got a little BRS stove. Um, these are really cool. They're only about $15 on Amazon. They're super lightweight, made out of titanium. Um, the only disadvantage of this compared to some of the other stoves is that you do have to have a lighter to light it or matches. Um, so that means carrying something else, but I haven't had any problems with this and it's worked really well for me. And inside here, I've got my fuel canister, little stand. All that fits in a nice little contained package. Now this is not the cover that came with it. I bought this separately because um, I used to use this for, as a, with a French press that I, used, that I got from my jet boil system. Um, so it's just a silicone top. The top that originally came with this was also titanium. Uh, the one disadvantage that I found with this system is that the handles here will get really hot when you're heating it up. So lots of times I'll take a piece of the bag here and wrap it around to, when I'm pulling it off the heat. But other than that, this is a really lightweight, small system. In this bag here, I have a bunch of porta wipes, which are little towels that are all dehydrated and compressed, and you just add a little bit of water to them, and then they expand out into full towels. And those are really nice in your kitchen kit. Uh, I carry a bottle of sanitizer. And then right here, I have a pour over coffee system. So this is made by Soto, and it's just a simple piece of metal, basically a spring, um, that you put a number two coffee filter in and you, you boil water, pour it over that with the filter inside. Um, real nice way to make coffee. I used to carry a grinder with me, but I kind of determined that was silly. <laughs> a lot of weight and a lot of work. Um, so now I'm gonna just grind my coffee beforehand. Uh, so for two cups of coffee, uh, I figure 28 to 30 grams of ground coffee is what you would need. So this folds up just like this. It's got its own little bag, and I put that in there. And other than that, I've got the lighter that I use to light fires of the stove is just a little torch also from Soto. So I keep that in my kit. And then I have my GSI cup. Now a lot of people will just use this and and kind of work with that. I really like to have a separate cup to put coffee in. That way I can make my coffee and drink my coffee while making breakfast. In, the, in a separate pot. And that's just more convenient to me. It does take up more room, uh, but that's one of those ones I'm willing to sacrifice. And this is really cool because if you open it up, it, the cup is also a measuring cup. Now, the other option you can go with is what's called a jet boil system. And I used to use this all the time, loved it. Uh, the biggest problem with this is that you put these two together and it just takes up a lot of room. Uh, but it is a really nice system. It's got a burner that's built in, and uh, I don't think there's anything on the market that's faster at boiling water. So you just put this on here, it's windproof. Uh, just a really nice system. So if you've got the room, uh, the jet boil is a great way to go. Uh, this system is definitely cheaper. Uh, the titanium pot's a little pricey, but uh, the stove is like $15, so you can't beat that. Also with the jet boil system, you can get a French press that you can use to press, uh, to make coffee in. Um, I used to do that all the time. I really enjoyed it. Uh, the one problem is that your pot is then full of coffee grounds, and when you're in the National Forest and things like that, you're, you're supposed to leave no trace, which means leaving no coffee grounds around. That, it's bad for the environment. 
Uh, so that's why I started going towards the filter system because I can just take the filter, squeeze out all the coffee into my mug, and then put it inside one of my freeze dry bags. These are all Ziploc, and then I can just pack it out much easier. And then the final piece to your set is a spork. Now you want to get a long one. Um, usually these things are made out of titanium, so they're really lightweight. Um, but you're usually going to end up eating your food right out of the bag. So having a long spork that you can get in and get, get your food out makes it a lot easier. Uh, like I mentioned before, it's got a Ziploc across the top, so you really don't want to cut this down any further than you have to, because um, then you would lose the functionality of the Ziploc for storing your garbage. Like I said before, I'll put links to all of this below. This one's a really nice one from Finnis City. It's one of the longest ones I've found, um, and it works really well. Then I put it back in my little, I, I like to keep things in, in stuff sacks or, or ditty bags so that it, it keeps everything separated and I can find things easier. So that's my cook kit. That's the optional jet boil. And here's one of the adventure meals. Now, when you're out in the woods, one of the other things you have to do is think about where you're going to put your food. And there are several options. Um, some people use bear bags, which is basically just a sack like this with a long rope on it and you throw it over a tree and you hang it up so it's just hang dangling in the middle so bears and animals can't get to it. Uh, the other option is what's called a bear canister, which is just a big plastic canister that has a screw on lid that um, you can then put anywhere away from your tent because you don't want to attract animals, especially bears, to where you're sleeping. So you could, but you could put it behind a log or something like that. And even if a bear finds it, they aren't going to be able to get into it. So you may have to search for it in the morning. So your final option is to use an op sack with an ur sack. Now the op sack um, is where you put your food to keep odors from getting out. Your ur sack is bear proof. Um, they can claw on this all day long and they aren't going to get through this. This, this is a bulletproof type of material that bears can't get into. Um, the one thing that you do have to be aware of, some national parks do not allow ursacs. And then in those cases, then you would have to have either a bear bag or a bear canister. All the ones that I've been to so far in Michigan have allowed these and it's been great. The beauty of this over a bear canister is that as you eat your food, this takes up less and less volume in your pack. Now besides food, you're also going to want to put toiletries and things like that, toothpaste, toothbrush, that type of thing, because those odors also attract animals. Uh, so you can just put those in the op sack in with your food and put it in your bear bag. One of the advantages of the bear canisters though, um, several of the people that I've hiked with and um, camped with before, is they'll use the bear canisters as, as their chair rather than carrying a separate chair, um, which is kind of cool. If you're an average sized person, that works. Me, not so much. Next, we'll talk about going to the bathroom in the woods. So when you're out in the back country, things are gonna happen and you have to go to the bathroom. I am still really due to this and everything's kind of worked out where all the trips I've gone on, there have been bathrooms during the day that we either hiked by or we kayaked by and I was able to time things where I didn't have to use this. <laughs> One of these days that's gonna change and I'm going to need to go out in the woods. The main thing you're going to need is a trowel. Um, basically, you have to dig a six inch hole um, I think eight inches deep and you're going to have to bury your, your waste. In some places you can bury your toilet paper with your waste, other places you're going to have to pack it out. So in your kit you're going to want to have a Ziploc bag and toilet paper. Now I have a little roll of toilet paper and I also have some of the Porta wipes. Um, these are all biodegradable, just like the towels I have in my cook kit. These are a little smaller version that work the same way. So you can take this put a little bit of water on it and it turns into a little wet wipe, but it's biodegradable so you can bury this in places where that's allowed. Um, and then of course you're going to want a bottle of sanitizer and that. Now the other thing that I bought that I've never used is a portable bidet. I was on a number of the backpacking forums and everybody talked about how great this was. You know, because you don't want to use a whole lot of toilet paper and things like that. So if you can get just kind of spray and clean yourself off a little first, that makes everything a little easier. Um, it doesn't take up a ton of room, not very heavy. Um, so I think that will be useful when the time comes. And having a supply of Ziploc bags is something that can be very useful all the time. So uh, having a few extra for in your kitchen kit and your poop kit um, goes a long way. 
Now let me show you my electronics bag. Okay, so I like to keep all my electronics in one place. No matter what the cable's for, um, if I have all the cables here, then I know where to look and where to put things away rather than keeping cables with different items. So, now one of the main pieces of equipment that you definitely want to have in your kit is a headlight. This is a black diamond model that has um, several white lights and also a red light, which is great for um, when you need to get up in the middle of the night and not disturb people in camp. Now this is another item that I really like. It's a pump for inflating and deflating my mattress, and it also acts as a tent light that has multiple settings. Um, I really like that because I used to carry around a pump and a, and a separate light. Getting one that does everything all in one, and this is rechargeable with the USB-C, uh, and it really puts out a lot of air. This is an item that came very highly recommended. I've used a Thermarest version before, and this has a lot more flow. Another thing I always carry with me is a pair of earbuds. You know, um, lots of times I don't sleep well in a tent, so it's nice to be able to listen to something on my phone without disturbing the other people in camp. The Jabra earbuds that I have come with a rechargeable case, so even after using them a while, I can put them in the case, and they'll recharge the next day, and I can still use them some more. I believe the Apple ones do that as well. Now, as far as devices go, this is one that I think everybody should have in their group. Um, not everybody should have one, but there should be at least one in the group. This is a satellite emergency device, um, and this is made by Garmin. And basically, if you have an emergency, there's an SOS button on the side. You can press that and get in touch with people and get rescued if you need it. Um, I bought this because I used to go backpacking a lot alone. I spent a lot of time on boats alone, and I just thought this was a good thing to have. Um, it, does, it does require a monthly subscription that I think the base one is around $11 a month, uh, which gives you some texting capabilities which is kind of cool. So if you're out in the middle of nowhere, your cell phone doesn't work and you want to let people know that you're safe, there's an app that will link up to this and you can send brief text messages or predefined messages. Um, the predefined messages are a lot cheaper than trying to send a custom text message. So I would definitely recommend having one of the, at least one of these in your group. Or if you're someone who does adventures alone, um, I would always recommend having something like this. I mean, if you fall down a hill on a trail, you know, this might be your only way of getting a hold of somebody. Now the rest of the stuff in my bag are just chargers for different pieces of equipment. I've got a charger for my watch, batteries for the GoPro, my phone, and the power supply for my CPAP machine. So, um, and I, then I also carry a spare set of batteries just in case. So that's my electronics kit. Now let's talk about water filtration. Um, this is something that comes up quite a bit as far as what's, what's the best way to filter water. And there are several, several types. Uh, the, the system that I use is the Be Free. Uh, this is a squeeze bag. You take it down to the river or lake or stream or whatever, fill this up, and then you've got a filter cartridge in here. The filter back in, then you just roll the bag up, squeezing the water out into, say, a Nalgene bag, or you could hook this up to a hose that would fill, say, a, a backpacking bladder or anything like that. Uh, this is super lightweight, super easy to use, um, very popular, um, but there, and there are a bunch of people that make things like this. Uh, Sawyer makes a squeeze filter that goes on to several different types of bags. And then you also have the gravity systems, which are the same basic idea. You fill one bag and it goes through the filter and then filters into another bag that can be shared throughout the camp. Uh, this is a great system for an individual. You, you can get a six liter bag system for a whole group. Now one of the other options is to go with a pump-based filter. Those have some advantages where you can get into a water supply a little easier because you just have a little hose to put down. Oftentimes they'll have ceramic filters or activated charcoal, which um, helps in areas, say, um, with a lot of tannins in the water. So let's say you're trying to filter water in a out of a cedar swamp that's all brown. The, the charcoal, activated charcoal filters will, will work a lot better for that. Now the one thing that comes up quite a bit is the issue of viruses. None of the cartridge filters get rid of viruses except for one that's made by MSR. The MSR Guardian is over $300 and it will filter just about everything. Uh, but it's extremely expensive and it's also very heavy to carry around. Uh, it works really well if you need it, but it's, it's really overkill for most situations. Now, if you're going in the backcountry in the United States or in Canada, 
you really don't need to worry about viruses as much. Um, the places like, you know, when you start getting into Central America, South America, you know, place, places where you can't drink the water in the hotel um, because it's not safe, the natural streams and all that are also usually contaminated. So in places like that, then yes, you're gonna wanna spend $300 or more to get the Guardian filter. Now you can also get rid of viruses using chemicals. You can get like chlorine tablets and iodine, uh, things like that. You can also use a UV pen, which will kill viruses. Um, so if you're, if you're really worried about it, you could use you know, a cartridge filter to get rid of all the bacteria and that type of thing and get the water clean of sediment and stuff. Then you could use a UV pen to get rid of the viruses that way. You're definitely gonna to wanna to think about where you're going to get water and how much you need to take with you. So this is my emergency medical kit and utility kit. So basically I have my med kit in here, um, some rope, some guy line, a uh, little, little hand chainsaw. Um, lots of times I might keep a knife or something like that, some extra tent stakes. Um, anything that's just kind of that I feel I might need on the trail uh, or need a spare of. But uh, always good to have rope and first aid. So you get these first aid kits at Amazon or REI or any of your, any type of local supplier. Uh, they come in different sizes. If you've got a larger group, you can get a bigger size and one person could carry a kit and other people would carry something else. Um, just a good thing to have. So the rest of the stuff that I have here, these are creature comforts. So this is my big Agnes chair. Um, I bought this one because it's made all out of metal and it works for a big guy like me. Um, most of the other ones are rated for around 200 pounds. This was rated up to 300 pounds. So um, I purchased that. Then the other thing I bought that I thought was really kind of cool, it's lightweight, is this little Trekology um, table. And basically this just comes, opens up. This opens up like this, um, and this is really kind of nice because if you're out in the, the middle of the woods and you, there's nowhere really flat to cook on or set your coffee cup on, you can set up this little table. It's less than a pound, um, not too bad. But as far as creature com comforts go, um, this is kind of cool. Uh, if I were backpacking, I probably wouldn't take this with me um, just because it, it is, it's bulky. And that's about it for the camping side of this. Now let me show you a few things that are for the kayak specific pieces of this. Now for the kayak specific items, this is what I'm gonna be taking. Uh, now for me, even if I'm renting a kayak, I like to have my own life jacket. Um, I really like the Stolquist life jackets. They, um, they're nice, they have a lot of room on the sides and flexibility for kayaking so you're not all bound up. Um, they've got a really nice front pocket here so you can stuff stuff into like a phone or batteries or things like that. Uh, that really makes my trip a lot better. When you rent a kayak, you, they will provide a life jacket for you, but oftentimes they're, they're not great. And if you're going on a you know, high speed river or out on big water, you always want to wear a life jacket. There's so many posts on Facebook every year where people died because they didn't have a life jacket on. The other item that I got for my last trip that was just wonderful was the Life Straw bottle. So the, what, the way this works is it has a filter built into the bottle and a straw on the top. So as you're floating down the river, you just grab water out of the river, put the filter cartridge back in, pop up the straw, and at that point you're drinking filtered water. Uh, is that way you don't have to carry so much in your boat. You don't have to have bottles that could get out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, has a nice little carabiner. This is really a good system. Uh, this, this one's made by Life Straw. Uh, Sawyer also makes one. Uh, so really a nice, nice way to go. The other thing I have, this is my kayak bag. Whether I'm on a trip across the state, on the big lakes, or just in town, I keep all of my kayak stuff in here. So, you know, the first thing, of course, is I want to have a waterproof bag for my phone. Uh, I really like the Pelican bags because they not only are waterproof, but they have a foam piece here so that you're, if it does fall in, your phone will be floating. Uh, I've had several other types of waterproof cases that were just basically plastic bags. And, you know, unless you blow into them and put some air in there, uh, th they can sink. So not a great system. 
Another thing that I always take with me is a waterproof Bluetooth speaker. I like to have music out on the lake. Um, I have a variety of dry bags, but this is one that I keep in this bag, which goes right into to the hatch in the center of my kayak that I can access all the time. And lots of times I'll put in like, you know, batteries, my wallet, things that I just don't want to get wet, but that I want to have easy access to. So this is a nice small one. I might have a larger one to put like clothes in and things like that um, outside of what I take camping. And this here is probably one of the most important pieces of equipment for me. Uh, it's a, this is a float for my glasses. And it's really easy, they just, your, your glasses arms just slide in here. And then you wrap it around your head without a hat on. Now, one of the things that I really like about this style of strap is that it, is that it rests right against the back of my head. I've had several other styles that the straps just hung down my back and they would get caught on things as I turned my head. This one, the strap stays with my head and works all the time. So I really like this style. And if your glasses fall off, you know, hopefully they float. And then the next thing you wanna have is a pair of gloves. Uh, if you're gonna be paddling for, you know, six, eight hours, you definitely wanna have gloves or you can also get padded grips that you can put on the paddle. Um, I prefer the gloves because then I've always got them with me and I'm used to wearing gloves for cycling and stuff too. They're the same idea. Then the final piece is a paddle float. Um, now if I'm paddling in a shallow river or something like that, I more than likely won't need this. Uh, but even so, lots of times you go into a reservoir or backwaters to a dam and it can get pretty deep. And if you tip over, this can be the thing that helps you get back in. And that's about it for the kayak specific stuff. Hi everyone, Future Jim here. Just got back from my kayak camping trip and everything went really well. Uh, all the gear that I packed worked perfectly. Uh, my new sleeping pad was just wonderful. I was actually able to sleep in a tent and backpacking for the first time ever. Uh, so that was great. I'll be doing a review on that um, shortly. But I wanted to talk about a few things that I missed talking about in this video today. Um, now one of the things that I didn't mention in this video was anything about clothing. Now for backpacking, typically you'll have a pair of clothing that you're wearing for backpacking during the day. And then in the evening, you'll have something that you sleep in. Um, sometimes you'll also have like some rain gear, maybe a warmer coat. For the most part, you're wearing the same things over and over again. Uh, when I go backpacking, the one thing that I do take extra of is underwear and socks. You know, if your socks get wet and you're hiking, that can be just miserable and not safe either. It just, it's a good idea to always have a second pair of socks. Um, with kayak camping, the one thing I noticed was my clothes were always wet. I mean, the minute I got in the kayak, the seat was wet from the day before and just everything was always wet. <laughs> so um, I wished I had taken an additional shirt and an additional pair of shorts. Um, I only took two pairs of shorts and one shirt and you know every night I was hanging them up trying to get them to dry out and in the morning my shirt was usually pretty good but my shorts were always still really damp. Um, you know it didn't really matter I was going to sit on a wet seat but it would have been nice to have you know a dry pair of shorts a few nights. For evenings I had a long sleeve shirt and a long pair of pants that were light, lightweight. Um, I wish I would taken a puffy jacket or something because it did get cold one of the nights, um, but not too bad. One thing I realized that I didn't have was any way to store my wet clothes. Um, so in the future, I would take another dry bag that would be just for wet clothing that I was gonna try to keep separate from the rest of the clothes. Um, that's one thing I just have, I've never run into before. I've never done a three night trip, so this was all new to me. Uh, the other thing that was kind of interesting that we didn't have any, no one in the group had a pen. So when we stopped at one of the campsites where we had to register, we didn't have any way to fill out the forms and deposit the, the money in the box. So that'll be something else that I'll be adding to the kit is, you know, a pen that we can use. But other than that, everything else that I showed in this video was what we needed for this, for this kayak camping trip. I don't think there was really any extra. Um, I think it all worked really, really well. I just wanted to step in and add a few of those items. Now back to the original video. Okay, so let's pack everything in the bag. So we'll start with the sleep system, tent, and the quilt, pillow, and the sleeping pad. Next we'll take the cook kit, the poop kit, 
the medical kit, H2O water filter, the electrical kit, then my poncho and the towel that I can just get to easily. Put our food in the op sack. And the tent stakes, can't forget those. Once we have everything in the bag, you wanna roll the top three times. Probably good to get some of the air out first. And then you snap each end. Cinch those down. We've got snaps here. And that's all there is to it. All ready to go on the kayak. So if you found this video useful, please hit the thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of my videos, hit subscribe and ding the bell. It encourages me to create more content for you and lets you know when I release new videos. I try to release a video every week or so. I put out content on outdoor adventures, recipes, product reviews, how-tos, all sorts of things. So if you found something interesting here, please subscribe and uh, help me grow my channel. Also, if you have any comments on things that you would suggest for backpacking, kayaking, bikepacking, please leave a comment below. I'll have links to all the items that I showed here today in the description so you can find them with, with budget alternatives as well. Thank you so much for watching.